to Alp d'Huez. Jan Ulrich, the lead of the tour by 1 minute and 11 seconds. Laurent Jalabert still equal with Marco Pantani. 3 minutes, 1 second. Then comes Bogart and Luc Leblanc. Well, since this race left Dublin, he was so far behind after the prologue, it seemed he was not interested. But 3 minutes off the lead, and it's very possible now he could snatch the yellow jersey away from Jan Ulrich. Especially in these conditions, for yeah. rain and very low temperatures, 12 degrees Celsius, and you can see already on the first climb of the day a lot of riders being left behind this is the Col de la Croix de Fer and now as we move on towards the Col de Galibier conditions haven't changed at all here Adolfo Massi has picked up both climbs of the Col de Croix de Fer and the Col de Telegraph the conditions here on the Galibier are quite atrocious now we're going up to the highest point of this year's Tour de France and Pantani isn't going to wait we're a long way from the top and a long way from the finish here and nobody has reacted I make it 11 kilometres to go to the summit here, Phil, and Pantani has not waited. In fact, he's looking over his shoulder to see if there's any reaction behind, and it's coming from Luc Leblanc. Now, this man crashed on the first climb of the day, the Col de Croix de Fer. It didn't seem to affect him at all, and now he's got help, and that's what he wants because there's an awful long way to go to the finish from the top of the, the Col de la Galibier, but it looks as if Luc Leblanc is in serious difficulty. Well, he's tried to go across to Pantani, but I don't think he's going to even get onto him here because the weather is bad and I think uh, Luc Leblanc is thinking better of the attack here. Certainly no reaction at all from Ulrich, content to set the tempo because remember this attack has gone very early. Once we go down off the Galibier, we run through the valley before we climb up uh, to the finish at Les Deux Alpes and this has caused all sort of consternation now. Christophe Renero is up the road as well. He's put a great performance in this afternoon. He's trying to set the road alight for the coffee this team. He's trying to set something up for Bobby Julek because today is the day in the Alps that Bobby Julek said he could challenge Jan Ulrich. He's always favoured the Alps over the Pyrenees and certainly that's why Team Coffee Dis have gone out. But Marco Pantani this afternoon has gone out to do something very special. But from the top of the Galibier field, there's 45 kilometres to go to the finish. That's an awful long way to go. It certainly is. There's jean Roban Robin sitting at the back of this league group here for the US Postal and riding a good solid race at the moment. Cofidis again have planted a lot of good riders in this front group, including Bobby Julik and uh, Christophe Renero. And I'll tell you what, Renero rode his first Tour de France last year and he only finished 115th. He's been a totally different rider this year so far. This group thinning down drastically. Leonardo Pipoli again flying the flag for Seiko at the back of the group. This is Baranowski, I think. Baranowski at the front for US Postal Service. US Postal having a great day in the mountains as well. They too will be moving up in the overall team standing. Sitting in second place there, Bobby Julik, I think, waiting for the moment when he's going to launch an attack and obviously using a lot of common sense and tactics there. Ulrich is leaving the others there to do the work because he realises they too are under pressure from Pantani. Well, we're looking at the back here of Rinero, but up further up the road is Marco Pantani. And he has gone, no, sorry, this Renero is leading on the slopes. This is Pantani coming up to him here. And Pantani has closed this gap quite sensationally. Renero was third over the Quad de Fer. He was second over the Col de Telegraph. And now he's going to have to hang on to the Flying Pirate if he gets up to him, and I think he will. What a move by Pantani there. He's going to pick up Christophe Renero, who was away at the bottom of this climb now, and I'm sure he will go straight by him. But there's an awful long way to, the, to go to the finish, and he's not too happy about the encouragement from the spectators. This is a very dangerous pastime. These spectators try and run alongside their favourites, and many, many riders in the past will have actually been knocked off by spectators doing this, which is why I think there's such a reaction coming from Pantani. Well, Jose Maria Jimenez from Benesto. He's a good climber, but he finds his hands full here now because Pantani has got to the front. Renero is doing well to grit his teeth. We're coming up towards the summit, but there's still a little way to go on the Galibier yet. We're losing the actual grass line and getting the barren side of this mountain. And all of a sudden, the rest are being left to make the pace. Julik also on the front now of the chase group. This is a serious move today by Marco Pantani. Remember, just over three minutes behind overall at the start of this stage. He's no longer looking for stage wins, Paul. He certainly isn't. He's trying to blow the Tour de France apart this afternoon. Now, there is one of the stream soigneurs, I think, from the Mercatoni squad. Now, that is probably an illegal move there, passing up a bottle to Pantani and also passing up a racing cape. Now, this is a very difficult manoeuvre there, trying to put this on, on a descent at 50 or 60 kilometres an hour. And the picture breakup is because we're not using helicopters this afternoon. We're actually using a, an aeroplane above the race because the cloud is so low.
And the aeroplane, by the way, is having to fly at 27,000 feet to bring us these pictures because of the mountains all around. And in fact, what you said has come to, to fruition, Paul. He stopped to put the cape on, and I think somebody slipped through on the inside of him. And so he's no longer first on the road, but I don't think it's too serious. Well, those two riders who came through were Renero, and in fact, the other rider from Bonesto was Jimenez. So they two have now made a three-man group at the front. Now, that's a very intelligent thing to do by Pantani there, because if he tried to change, he may well have come off, and in fact, it looks as if somebody's gone off the road there. Well, somebody's gone behind that caravan. It looks as though it might be Bobby Julik in the corner there. It is. Julik's going straight on. He was trying to put his cape on as well. Well, he lost it going round the corner there, obviously deciding to go straight on instead of trying to turn around there, and he's going to be quite scared on the descent now. He's obviously used that opportunity to stop and put his cape on. He's trying to wrap it up now. All of these riders trying to keep as warm as possible because it's very difficult. Phil, there's a problem here with the yellow jersey. Well, the yellow jersey, I think, has got a flat tyre, and it's another puncture here. We're not very far away from the climb of Les Deux Alpes either, and the weather conditions have closed in, and once again, Jan Ulrich is finding the Tour de France is not his friend. Well, on the slope of the Deux Alpes already, Marco Pantani has started to climb up towards the finish, but that was a very slow wheel change for Jan Ulrich there, picking his way through the cars, and you can see there this town we're coming into now is the start of the climb, Le Deux Alpes, so Jan Ulrich once again in difficulty at the bottom of a mountaintop finish. Well, we are going to struggle to bring you the pictures now, but that is the time gap, I presume, We're back to the Jan Ulrich group, and that is four minutes, which puts Pantani in the yellow jersey now, and already Ulrich is out of it. What an amazing tour this is turning out to be, and we're still being run off at record speed. And the big problem for Ulrich this afternoon is he does not have any teammates with him. They've all been left behind on the slopes of the Galibier. And Marco Pantani is riding a time trial here to what for him I think is going to be a second victory because he's not showing any signs of being affected by the cold weather. He hasn't got a raincoat on now. He's obviously thrown that away and he's going to ride up this mountain as fast as he can. Well, we've been treated to this man in the Pyrenees. Now, what are they going to do about him here in the Alps? But at least there's some reaction coming. Bobby Julik trying to get away from the front of the group now and put some time into Ulrich as well. Well, he should have gone when Pantani went, but now he's trying to save as much as he can. He's gone away at the bottom of the Dezelt. The reaction behind was coming from Michael Bogard. But the drama further back, Phil, is Jan Ulrich cannot get into a rhythm. And in fact, he's losing time on the Bobby Julik group. And still, he has nobody to help him. It appeared initially he was coming back, but he looks to me as though he's not just cracked physically, he's cracked mentally here. And the way he's dropped back now, he's a very lonely rider indeed. Nobody around to help him, and his Tour de France could be running away from him. And I never thought we'd say that this year. Well, that's the difference between being at the front of the race and being at the back. Marco Pantani won't be feeling the cold at the moment. All he's thinking about is concentrating on keeping his pace high, getting to the top of this mountain as quickly as possible. He's had success in the Alps before. In fact, on the other side of the valley to where we are now, at the Alpe d'Huez, where he won on two occasions, today he's looking to put another Alpine stage on his credits. Well, he's magnificent when he's in full flight, but in weather conditions like this, we are looking now at time gaps, which might take us back into the mid-50s. These conditions, Phil, are unbelievable. That was Udo Bolt. In fact, he has caught up with Jan Ulrich and he's trying to pace him, but it looks as if the German has completely cracked. I think, as you said, his, his mind has gone. His job is not on the job anymore. He's just trying to survive. He's going to try and take this raincoat off, throw that away to the crowd. But for him, he really has to concentrate to keep himself in the Tour de France this afternoon. Well, he's very, very unhappy, that's for sure now. He's a little bit confused as well, is young Jan Ulrich. The Tour de France, he obviously didn't have the right depth of his form. We were wondering if he was overweight. He certainly isn't that, but I'm wondering too if his preparation hasn't been quite right this year. And Pantani is now going to find out the answer to that because he is putting home the attack here. He is gaining minutes over the rest of the race. Here's Bogert now, but still staying in the frame. Well, there's Bobby Julek as well, setting the pace, trying to pull back a little bit of time on Marco Pantani, but it's slipping away. Four minutes and four seconds, 41 minutes, 41 seconds behind him is Jan Ulrich. So Ulrich is slipping away, and Bobby Julek could be riding himself into the yellow jersey. And there is now, Rees has now picked up uh, Jan Ulrich, so it's looking as though he might get a little bit of help at hand here. Van der Voer, who has had a good race so far, he's also come into the frame for Lotto, but with every respect to the youngster, he shouldn't be riding alongside Jan Ulrich at this moment in time. One would expect Jan Ulrich to be a lot further up the slopes than he is now, but you know, it must have been a psychological blow. The last time we had a mountaintop finish, he punctured at the bottom. Today,